Welcome viewers, in this video we will see the definition of inductance and derivation of inductance of coaxial cable that is a underground cable or normally a cable. First we will see the inductance. So the inductance is a property of the coil which does not permit sudden changes in the current. So the inductance is nothing but a coil. The main property of the inductor is it will not allow sudden change in current. Current will increases gradually or decreases gradually. So it is defined as flux linkage per unit current. That is L equal to N pi by I. This N pi is nothing but flux linkage divided by current. So this inductance based on three parameter. Number of turns in the coil, flux linking with the coil and current flowing through the coil. N pi by I. The unit is Henry. Right. So, flux linkage per unit current. Now, we will see the inductance of a coaxial transmission line. So, inductance of coaxial cable. What is coaxial cable? It, it contains two conductors, inner and outer conductor. The axis is same for both the conductor. That is why it is called a coaxial cable. It has the radius A, the inter internal conductor radius is A, external conductor radius is B. It is an underground cable, black color underground cable having two conductors. By using that we can transmit the single phase power. One is used for phase, one is used for neutral, another one used for neutral. And also it is simply it can take the inductance of a cable, simply we can take it as inductance of a cable that refers a underground cable, overhead cable separate derivation is available. So this one refers underground single phase coaxial cable having two conductors A and B, radius is A and B. Now we can refer the diagram. So this is a coaxial cable, so the axis is same, the axis is common for both in inner and outer conductor. So this is the inner conductor with radius A meters, this is the outer conductor with radius B meter, right, inner conductor and outer conductor, the axis will be common, that is why it is called a coaxial cable. The surface area is DS, the current I is flowing through this conductor. We consider 1 meter length of cable. The length of the cable is 1 meter. For calculation purpose, we consider one point P, which is in between A and B, greater than, greater than A and less than B. At that, the radius is rho meters. We consider one small, one, we consider one point P at a radius rho meter, that is in between A and B, right? So the one state conductor is available, current flowing through the conductor is I meter. This is the inner conductor with radius A, this is the outer conductor with radius B. This is the surface area, the length of the conductor, the length of the cable or conductor is 1 meter. We consider one point P at a distance rho meter from the axis of the cable. So this is a diagram also same, it's the inner conductor with radius A outer conductor with radius B. Point P is located at a distance rho meter. So both are same. So inductance of a cable or inductance of a coaxial cable or inductance of cable with the two conductor for all this is the same derivation. Another derivation inductance of solid conductor means only one conductor will be there that is separate derivation. And inductance of two wire transmission line that is overhead transmission line that is separate derivation is available. So this refers the underground cable having two conductors. Now we will see the description. The conductor in the cable carries a steady current of I. The current I is flowing through the conductor. The radius of inner and outer conductors are A and B. Right? The radius of inner and outer conductor is A and B. We will see the further descriptions. Now we consider the differential area ds at a distance rho meter at, at a distance rho meter from point p. So uh, this is not a point p. 
consider a differential area at point P with radius rho meter from the axis of the cable. So, this one. Consider 1 meter length of cable. We consider 1 meter length of the cable. The magnetic field intensity at point P can be obtained by Ampere's law. By using Ampere's law, we can find the magnetic field intensity, thereby we will find the inductance. Our aim is to find the inductance. First, we will find the magnetic field intensity. Then step by step, finally, we will calculate the inductance of this cable. So, based on the Ampere's law, what is given? Work done equal to current. Integral h dot dl equal to i. That is the uh, statement given by Ampere's law. So, in this derivation, h dot 2 pi rho equal to i. What is 2 pi rho? Integral h dot dl equal to i. So, integral dl is l. L is nothing but circumference. Circumference of that cylinder. The closed loop. 2 pi rho. We consider the the radius rho. The inner and outer radius is A and B. In between we consider one, the one segment called rho. So, h dot 2 pi rho equal to i. From that h equal to i divided by 2 pi rho. Right. So, this is the magnetic field intensity. From that magnetic flux density B can be calculated as B equal to mu h. There is a relation available between B and h. Right. So, B equal to mu h. So, from magnetic field intensity, we can calculate the magnetic flux density B equal to mu into H. H is nothing but I divided by 2 pi rho. So, that B equal to mu I divided by 2 pi rho. Right? So, this is the equation number 1. Now, we got the expression for B, magnetic flux density. But in general, the magnetic flux density is given as d pi by ds the general formula flux per unit area magnetic flux density means flux per unit area take this equation number 2 right so this left hand side are equal so we can equate the terms available in right hand side these two terms are we can equate because these two left hand side the these two parameters are equal right so from equation 1 and 2 we can equate this d pi by ds equal to mu i divided by 2 pi rho. Right? Both the equation 1 and 2, the right hand side terms are equated. Right? From that d pi equal to mu i divided by 2 pi rho, this ds is brought in this left, right hand side into ds. Right? The ds is available now here. So, d pi equal to mu i divided by 2 pi rho. What is ds? d rho into dz. That is radius into height. This rho refers the radius, z refers the height. We consider 1 meter length of cable, right? The radius is rho. Actual radius is A and B, right? Okay. So, this is the flux linkage due to small segment, small point, the rho. If we want to find the total flux, the total flux linkage can be obtained by integration. By integrating on both the side, we can get the total magnetic flux, right? I will go for the integration. So, integral d pi equal to double integral because here we have two terms radius as well as the length. So, ra radius varies from A to B. We need to find the inductance between inner and outer conductor that is radius of inner conductor to radius of outer conductor. So, that A to B is a limit for this radius for the distance for the length length is 0 to 1 we consider 1 meter length of cable right so the limit for the radius is a to b that is nothing but radius of the inner and outer conductor the limit for the length is 0 to 1 because we consider 1 meter length of cable now this mu i divided by 2 pi is constant only we have 1 by rho d rho into d is d rho into d z right with a limit a to b and 0 to 1. Now we can go for the integration of 1 by rho. So with that pi equal to mu i divided by 2 pi is constant integral 1 by rho is log rho with a limit a to b integral d z is z with a limit 0 to 1 right. 1 by rho integral 1 by rho is log rho and integral dz is z with a limit 0 to 1. Now we can substitute the limit 
mu i divided by 2 pi you substitute the limit log b minus log a upper limit minus lower limit and here upper limit 1 minus 0 so that is nothing but 1 so pi equal to mu i divided by 2 pi log b minus log a can be written as log b by a that you know very well log b by a this become 1 right now but now our aim is to find the inductance so bring this i in the denominator so what will happen pi divided by i equal to mu divided by 2 pi log b by a right what is pi divided by i pi divided by i is nothing but inductance already we discussed that l equal to n pi by i here n is 1 so it is pi by i pi by i can be written as inductance that is mu divided by 2 pi log b by a so the final expression for inductance of this cable underground cable is mu divided by 2 pi log b by a the unit is henry per meter because we consider 1 meter length of cable so this expression for 1 meter length of cable so the unit is henry per meter suppose if you want to find the entire length inductance of l meter length of cable is given by that is nothing but l equal to mu divided by 2 pi log b by a into l you have to multiply with length of the cable so that the total inductance of total cable length of the cable can be obtained in this case the unit will be henry here we consider full length of cable right so the final expression is inductance l equal to mu divided by 2 pi log b by a into l for the entire length of the cable so in this video we discuss about the definition of inductance and definition derivation of the inductance of cable coaxial cable or underground cable having two conductors thank you Welcome viewers in this video we will see the inductance of coaxial line with solid conductor only one conductor available in previous video the inductance of coaxial cable with the two conductors is available in this video having only one solid conductor so this diagram shows the coaxial transmission line with a solid conductor of radius a meter right so refer the diagram we have one inner con one conductor is available only one solid conductor the radius is a meters if you want to transmit the single phase power we need one more conductor for single phase power we need like this one more conductor is needed so here we have only one conductor for transmitting single phase power like this we need two conductors so the flux total flux is now we have pi 1 and pi 2 sum of pi 1 and pi 2 what is pi 1 the flux due to this solid conductor itself is nothing but pi 1 flux linkage due to the solid conductor so due to single phase we are having two conductors so the flux between these two conductors is pi 2 flux linkage between two conductors right so in this derivation we consider only one conductor solid conductor with radius a if you want to transmit the single phase power we need two conductors so the flux is nothing but flux due to the solid conductor pi 1 flux between these two conductors pi 2 we assume that one more conductor is available nearby so the flux is pi 1 plus pi 2 right so we need to find pi 1 then pi 2 for calculation purpose we consider one point p consider a point p at a distance of r meter radius which is less than radius a right we consider one radius r r radius which is less than a the radius r is less than a meter the radius of the conductor that means the point p is located inside the conductor not outside it is inside the conductor the point p is located inside the conductor with a radius of r meter which is less than a so at point p we will see the derivation so our aim is to find the inductance inductance of the solid conductor first we will find magnetic field intensity then flux from flux we can find the inductance because inductance l equal to n pi by i right so we start with the magnetic field intensity 
what is magnetic field intensity from ampere's law i divided by 2 pi a a is nothing but radius of the conductor but here we assumed one radius r so we are multiplying with the ratio r by a what is r what is a a is nothing but radius of the conductor r is we assumed one point p which is less than a so if the r is 50 percentage means we will get 50 percentage of ratio here if r is 0.7 is 70 percentage mean we will we'll get 70 percentage will be multiplied for example a is 10 meter r is 5 meter mean 5 by 10 that is 1 by 2 50 percentage will be multiplied together in order to make the ratio between r and a we are multiply with r by a suppose a and r both are equal it got cancelled otherwise the ratio will be multiplied so this is due to ampere's law integral h dot dl equal to i so h equal to i by integral dl that is 2 pi a circumference so after this what we have i r divided by 2 pi a square here one a is available here one a available so 2 pi a square i r divided by 2 pi a square so from magnetic field intensity we will find the magnetic flux density b what is b b equal to mu h one relation is available b equal to mu into h so that mu into h is nothing but i r divided by 2 pi a square so b equal to mu i r divided by 2 pi a square so now we got the expression for magnetic flux density b but magnetic flux density one more formula is available general formula d pi 1 equal to b into a Right? that is b equal to pi by a so that d pi equal to b into a flux density equal to flux divided by area so that flux equal to flux density into area this pi 1 refers flux density due to solid conductor alone then flux leakage between two conductors pi 2 we will calculate later right so d pi 1 equal to b into a what is b is available here mu i r divided by 2 pi a square so here also we multiplied by ratio r square by a square actually it is pi r square divided by pi a square due to area we are multiply with pi. this pi pi got cancelled so r square by a square into dr right we are going to differentiate with respect to radius the length of the conductor we assumed as 1 so only we have the radius r now we got the expression for d pi 1 so d pi 1 equal to mu naught i r cube divided by 2 pi a power 4 into dr after simplifying this we got this value so this d pi 1 is the flux of the solid conductor due to small radius r we assumed one point point p at a radius r we want to get the total flux the entire flux linkage can be obtained by integration by integrating on both the side we will get the total flux linkage then what is the limit for that limit is 0 to a that's a is nothing but radius of the solid conductor right so the radius increases from 0 to a so the limit is from 0 to a now integrate on both the side integral d pi 1 equal to integral 0 to a mu naught i r cube divided by 2 pi a power 4 into dr so d pi integral d pi 1 is nothing but pi 1 so this is a total flux that is equal to mu naught i divided by 2 pi a power 4 is constant only we are going to integrate r cube into dr this r cube we are going to integrate only the term r cube with a limit 0 to a now we will go for the integration so mu naught i divided by 2 pi a power 4 <coughs> constant so integral r cube is nothing but r power 4 by 4 right integral r cube is r power 4 by 4 now we need to substitute the limit a and 0 so mu naught i divided by 2 pi a power 4 this r is replaced by a power 4 by 4 minus 0 lower limit is 0 so what is that that is nothing but mu naught i divided by 2 pi a power 4 a power 4 by 4 this 0 is available so a power 4 for a power 4 got cancelled right so what we got pi 1 equal to mu naught i 2 pi into 4 is 8 pi pi 1 equal to 
mu naught i divided by 8 pi. So this pi 1 is nothing but flux due to solid conductor alone. Right, pi 1. Now we need to find pi 2 value. What is pi 2? Flux linkage between two conductors. We, here we have only one conductor but single phase we have we need one more conductor. We assume that nearby one more conductor is there. The flux linkage between these two conductors is pi 2. What is this value? Mu naught i divided by 2 pi log b by a. So this derivation available in a previous video. The inductance of a cable or inductance of coaxial transmission line with inner and outer cylinders. From that we are referring this value. The, the, the flux linkage between two conductors available in the previous video you can refer. So from that we are taking this value mu naught i divided by 2 pi log b by a. So now we got the two values pi 1 and pi 2. Pi 1 due to solid conductor alone. Pi 2 between the two conductors. Right. Now we will go to the total flux. Total flux is pi 1 plus pi 2. So the total flux equal to pi equal to pi 1 plus pi 2. Pi 1 is mu naught i divided by 8 pi plus mu naught i divided by 2 pi log b by a. Right. So pi 1 and pi 2 are added together. So mu naught i divided by 2 pi we can take it as common. Right. So here mu naught i by 8 pi is there. 2 pi is taken outside. So we got 1 by 4. 2 into 4 8. Plus this mu naught i 2 pi is taken outside. Only we have log b by a. Right. So pi equal to mu naught i divided by 2 pi 1 by 4 plus log b by a. This is the flux value. But what we need is inductance. Right. So the bring this i in the denominator. Right, bring the i in the denominator so that pi divided by i equal to mu naught divided by 2 pi of 1 by 4 plus log b by a. Right, this i is brought into denominator. What is pi by i? Pi by i is nothing but inductance. n pi by i is the formula here n is 1 so pi by i is nothing but inductance. So that is equal to mu naught divided by 2 pi 1 by 4 plus log b by a. So this is the total inductance of a solid conductor having only one conductor by referring one more conductor assuming one more conductor available nearby right so mu naught divided by 2 pi 1 by 4 plus log b by a a is nothing but area of a is nothing but radius of the conductor the b is nothing but distance between the conductor this b refers distance between the conductors right so now we got the expression for inductance of a solid conductor. In this video, we discussed the inductance of solid conductor. Right? Thank you. Welcome viewers. In this video, we will see the inductance of two wire transmission line. This two wire transmission line means the overhead transmission line. There are two conductors available. In previous videos, the underground transmission line is available. With a solid conductor, one derivation is available. With coaxial line with two conductors, inner and outer conductors, one more, deri one more derivation also available in previous two videos. That two videos refers the underground cable, having two conductors and one conductor. But this derivation refers the two wire transmission line, overhead transmission line. So this conductor A is available, this is conductor B. The conductor A, the current flowing is plus i for conductor B minus i. The radius of the conductor A is small a. The radius of the conductor B is small b. The center to center distance between the conductor is d meters. Right. So we have two conductors A and B with the current plus i and minus i. Radius small a and small b. The distance is d meters. So the total inductance is nothing but the loop inductance between conductor A and B is nothing but LA plus LB. Conductance inductance due to conductor A, inductance due to conductor B. L equal to LA plus LB. Now we will see the description. A 
consider two conductors A and B of radius small a and b respectively and separated by a distance d meter. Right? We are considering two conductors A and B with radius small a and b the distance is d meter. The conductor A carries the current of plus i and conductor B carries the current of minus i. So one is forward path and another one is a return path. Right. Now we will see the inductance of a conductor A. The total inductance of conductor A. What is total inductance? So we consider one conductor A. Nearby one more conductor is there. So the flux is due to conductor A and flux between conductor A and B. There are two flux will be available in conductor A. Flux due to conductor A itself and flux between conductor A and B. That is available in the previous video. The inductance of a solid conductor. From that we are referring this expression. So this expression is nothing but inductance of a total inductance of a conductor A. Right? Mu naught divided by 2 pi 1 by 4 plus log d by a. This a is nothing but radius of the conductor a. d is nothing but the distance between conductor a and b. Right? So this inductance is due to two fluxes. One is flux due to conductor a itself. Flux between conductor a and b based on that we got this expression. This explanation detailed video available in previous video. The inductance of solid conductor. So this refers the inductance of a conductor A. Then inductance of conductor B. Similarly we have mu naught divided by 2 pi 1 by 4 plus log D by B. What is B? Radius of the conductor B. D is nothing but the distance between the conductors. Right? Now we got the expression for LA and LB. The total refers conduct inductance due to flux due to conductor A and flux between A and B. That's why it is written as total. So the total inductance now is nothing but LA plus LB. By adding these two, we will get the loop inductance. Loop inductance of a transmission line. So the loop inductance of the transmission line is L equal to LA plus LB. We can add both the values. So mu naught divided by 2 pi of 1 by 4 plus log d by a plus mu naught divided by 4, 2 pi. This is not 4 pi, it is a 2 pi of 1 by 4 plus log d by b. Right? So the a refers radius of conductor a, b refers radius of conductor b. This d refers distance between the conductors. Now we can take mu naught divided by 2 pi as a constant. So 1 by 4 and this 1 by 4 plus log d by a plus log d by b. So you can add this 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 that is nothing but 1 by 2. So the loop inductance, total inductance of this 2 wire transmission line is mu naught divided by 2 pi of 1 by 2 plus log d by a plus log d by b. So this is the final expression for inductance of two wire transmission line. Now based on this we will solve one problem. So evaluate the loop inductance per kilometer of a single phase transmission line. Right? We need to find the loop inductance per kilometer. It is given as per kilometer of a single phase transmission line comprising two parallel conductors spaced one meter apart the distance between the conductor is one meter and the radius of these two conductors is 0.8 centimeter and one centimeter right so the radius of first conductor available radius of second conductor available distance between the conductor also available right we will see the given data so the d distance between the conductor is one meter radius of the first conductor is 0.8 centimeter that is equal to 0.8 into 10 to the power minus 2 meter the radius of the second conductor b equal to 1 centimeter that is equal to 1 into 10 to the power minus 2 meter so what is the loop inductance just now we discussed la plus lb that is nothing but 
mu naught divided by 2 pi 1 by 2 plus log d by a plus log d by b. This mu naught is constant 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 plus 1 by 2. The d value available here and a and b value also available. Now we can, now we will substitute the value 1 by 1. Now this value is substituted mu naught is nothing but 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7. Mu r is 1, we assume that r divided by 2 pi into 1 by 2 plus log d by a. d is 1, a is 0.8 into 10 to the power minus 2 plus log d by b, d is 1, b is 1 into 10 to the power minus 2, right. This 4 pi available here, 2 pi available got 2 times got cancelled. This 1 by 2 is nothing but 0.5, the value of this is nothing but 2.097, the value of this log is 2. So we have 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 of 0.5 plus 2.097 plus 2. Right? By simplifying this value what we got inductance is 9.19 into 10 to the power minus 7 Henry. The total inductance of this loop inductance of this transmission line is 9.19 into 10 to the power minus 7 Henry. So in this video we discuss the inductance of two wire transmission line, overhead transmission line. We got the derivation and we solve one problem. The inductance of solid conductor and inductance of the cable having two conductors available in previous videos you can refer. So the totally three derivations available. Inductance of two conductors underground, inductance of solid conductor, inductance of two wire transmission line. Thank you. Welcome viewers in this video we will see the inductance of solenoid and toroid followed by the problems. First we will see the inductance of a solenoid. A solenoid is nothing but a electromagnet. One iron rod is available over the iron rod coil is winded. When the current is flowing through the coil it become electromagnet. Right? So solenoid is an electromagnet it is formed by winding few turns over an iron rod. You refer this diagram. So this is iron rod over which the coils are winded. If the current is flowing through the coil it becomes the electromagnet. Now we are going to identify the what is the expression for inductance of this solenoid. Consider the solenoid with length L meters. In general the inductance L is given by L equal to n pi by i. The general formula for inductance is n pi by i. But the flux pi can be written as mmf divided by reluctance. Actually reluctance equal to mmf divided by flux. From that we got flux equal to mmf by reluctance. This mmf is nothing but n into i, number of turns into current. These are all only general formulas. Then the reluctance is nothing but very similar to resistance. So it is L by mu a. Resistance means rho L by a. Here L by mu a. Resistivity here we have the mu. So this mu a can be go to the numerator. So what will happen? N i mu a divided by L. The flux pi equal to N pi mu a divided by L. Now we can substitute this pi value in the inductance formula. Inductance L equal to N pi by i. So N by i into pi. This pi is where we are going to replace this value. N i mu a divided by L. Right? n by i into pi, pi value is replaced with this expression. So i i got cancelled. So what we have n into n, n square mu a divided by l. Right? So the inductance of a solenoid is n square mu a divided by l. All the formulas are general formulas, not specific to the solenoid. Right? General formula we substituted and we got this value. From this expression, Inductance of a solenoid is directly proportional to square of number of turns and permeability. Right? It is directly proportional to square of number of turns and permeability. And also it is proportional to area of the coil divided by length of the coil, A by L also. Now we will go to the toroid. We will see the 
derivation of inductance of a toroid. So what is toroid? So the, if a long solenoid is bent in the form of ring and thereby closed itself, it becomes a toroid. The solenoid is a lengthier. If the length is solenoid, if the two ends are joined together and form a circle, form a ring, then it is called a toroid. So this is the toroid. Is it? it is available in the form of ring. The solenoid is a long, long iron rod. This is closed iron rod. The two ends are closed and form the ring. Right. So if the long solenoid is bent and two ends are joined together, then it becomes a toroid. So in this toroid, the coils are winded here. So these coils are available. So due to the ring form, the inner, this inner radius is called Ri, internal radius up to this point. It's a core, internal radius of the core. Up to the end is a external radius of core, internal radius Ri, external radius Re. So in between these two, this represented by the dot lines, Rm mean radius, Rm is mean radius, sum of Ri plus Re divided by 2. The internal radius and external radius added divided by 2 will give the mean radius. Right? So, we have the iron rod is available in a ring form, coils are winded, internal radius is Ri, external radius is Re. This dotted line in between internal and external is called a mean radius, that is Ri plus Re divided by 2, right. So Lm, what is Lm mean length? One lengthy solenoid is bent in the form of ring. So the length of the solenoid is nothing but circumference of this toroid. Because the lengthy wire, the lengthy, the lengthy solenoid is available that is closed together and form the ring. So the length of the solenoid is nothing but circumference of this toroid. L equal to 2 pi m. The circumference is 2 pi m. Here we are referring the mean radius. Right. So Lm equal to 2 pi rm. Then this small r is nothing but radius of this coil. Here the coils are available. This radius refers the radius of the core. This small r refers the radius of the coil. Then what is the area of the coil is pi r square. Area of the coil is pi r square. Right. So this is the detail about that. Now we'll see the description. Let us consider a toroid of internal radius Ri and external radius Re. A toroid is provided with uniformly distributed winding of a large number of closed spaced turns. Right? The uniformly distributed winding is available with large numbers. The flux line in the toroid may be treated as a number of concentric circles. Right? The flux lines are in a concentric circle. It follows in a concentric circle manner. So with this we will go for the derivation. So in general the inductance L equal to N pi by I. Very similar to previous solenoid. Same thing we are following. L equal to N pi by I. But the flux can be written as mm of by reluctance. That is reluctance equal to mm of by flux. So that flux equal to mm of by reluctance. This mm of is nothing but N into I. The reluctance that is very similar to res resistivity. L divided by mu A. Here we are referring Lm. Mean length. L divided Lm divided by mu A. So this mu A will go to the numerator. So pi equal to n i mu a divided by l m. Right? We got the expression for flux. Now we can substitute the flux in this inductance. n by i into pi. This pi can be replaced by this n i mu a divided by l m. So inductance equal to n pi by i. So L equal to N by I into pi. Now we can replace this value. N I mu A divided by L M. Very similar to solenoid. What we discussed earlier. Only thing here we replaced L as L M. So this I I got cancelled. So it becomes N square mu A divided by L M. Right. It is very similar to solenoid also. Now we are going to substitute the value of 
area and mean length right the area is the area is nothing but pi r square area can be replaced by pi r square similarly the mean length is nothing but 2 pi r m only that this is the difference between the solenoid and toroid we are going to replace these two value so l equal to n square mu this a is replaced as pi r square this l m is replaced as 2 pi r m the pi pi got cancelled so what we have n square mu r square divided by 2 r m right we are getting the expression in terms of radius of the coil and the mean radius of the core r m right so the inductance of the toroid is l equal to n square mu r square divided by 2 r m n square mu r square divided by 2 r m so we got the expression for inductance of solenoid and inductance of toroid based on that we will see the problem we will go to the first problem the problem one is the magnetic circuit comprising a toroid of 500 turns and area of 6 cm square and mean radius 15 cm and carries a current of 4 ampere right carries a current of 4 ampere so the number of turns is 500 area is 6 cm square that is 6 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter square the mean radius mean radius means rm 15 cm that is 15 into 10 to the power minus 2 meter the current is also given as 4 ampere so these are all the given data. This mu naught is constant, 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7. We need to calculate the value of reluctance, MMF and flux. Right? We will see these values one by one. So first we will see the reluctance. Reluctance S equal to L divided by mu A. Very similar to resistivity. The L is nothing but 2 pi Rm. The length is nothing but circumference of the toroid. 2 pi rm divided by mu a. So 2 into pi into rm is given. Mean radius is 15 into 10 to the power minus 2. Divided by mu is nothing but 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7. The area given as 6 into 10 to the power minus 2. So this 16 to 10 to the power minus 4 area is given centimeter square while converting meter square it is 10 to the power minus 4. So after simplifying this what we got S equal to 12.5 into 10 to the power 8. It is very similar to resistance. The unit will be the ohms. Right. So after simplifying the reluctance S equal to 12.5 into 10 to the power 8. Now we will go to the MMF, MMF value. This MMF is nothing but n in i, number of turns into current. Number of turns is 500, current is 4 ampere, so MMF will be 2000 ampere turns. Very simple, directly we substitute it. Right? The MMF equal to 2000 ampere turns. Then we will calculate the flux. Flux pi equal to MMF by reluctance. So MMF is 2000, that's to be calculated. Then reluctance is what we calculated reluctance as 12.5 into 10 to the power 8. Right. So 2000 divided by 12.5 into 10 to the power 8. So after simplifying this what we got flux equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 6 Weber. Right. So now we got the value of reluctance, MMF and flux. Now we will go to the second problem. So in the second problem a toroid this is also based on the toroid having 1000 turns number of turns is 1000 and mean radius 20 cm and radius of the coil 2 cm right number of turns available mean radius and area of the coil is radius of the coil is available we need to find the self inductance inductance of the toroid having two different conditions with air core with air core means the mu r value will be 1 right with ion core for that the relative permeability is given mu r equal to 800 right 
so we need to find the self inductance value for first one is with the r core for that mu r equal to 1 then i n core for that mu r equal to 800 right we'll see the data given data number of turns is 1000 mean radius is 20 centimeter that is 20 into 10 to the power minus 2 meter then radius of the coil is 2 centimeter that is 2 into 10 to the power minus 2 meter the mu r is constant 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 right now we'll go to the first condition with r core mu r equal to 1 r core means it is mu r value will be 1 now we'll see what is the expression for the inductance of a toroid the inductance of the toroid is mu naught mu r n square r square divided by 2 rm just before we got the derivation for this inductance of a toroid so mu naught is 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 mu r value is 1 r core the number of turns is 1000 1000 square right this is also 1000 square into r r square r is 2 2 into 10 to the power minus 2 square divided by 2 into rm mean radius 2 into 20 into 10 to the power minus 2 right now we substituted all the values after simplifying what we got 1.257 milli entry milli means 10 to the power minus 3 1.257 into 1.257 milli entry now we'll go to the second division with ion core for that the mu r value is given as 800 all the values are same only we need to replace mu r is 800 so inductance of toroid is mu naught mu r n square r square divided by 2 rm mu naught is 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 here mu r is given as 800 ion core with the 800 the problem itself it is given then n square the n square value is 1000 1000 square into 2 into 10 to the power minus 2 square divided by 2 rm 2 into 20 into 10 to the power minus 2 so after simplifying what we got 1 henry it is nearly equal to 1 henry right so now we got the expression for value of inductance with r core and ion core with a mu r value of 800 so in this video we discuss the inductance of solenoid inductance of toroid and two problem based on the toroid thank you all